with the last item in traditional style. Um, a pair who need no introduction so they can do their own. The dynamic duo in themselves, William and Lauren. This is uh, quite an experience for us because it marks our second anniversary. It was actually um, the Long Gallery stroke President's Birthday concert when William and I made our first appearance. And you'd be glad to know that we're not doing the same material. <laughs> Well, not all of it, anyway. <laughs> William Fallon at the piano and Lawrence Kershaw, vocalist, are friends, musicians, and both in their final year at Queen's. Pardon me, boy, is that the Chattanooga choo-choo? Track 29, boy, you can give me a shine. I can afford to buy the Chattanooga choo-choo. I've got my fare and just a trifle to spare. You leave the Pennsylvania stage about a quarter to four. Read a magazine and then you're in for the mall. Dinner in the diner, nothing could be finer than to have you have an extra Carolina. When you hear the whistle blowing me to the bar, woo, then you know the Tennessee is not very far. Shove along the calling guard and keep it rolling, woo woo, Chattanooga, there you are. Well, I come from Tring in Hampshire. My, my father's a general practitioner. I was at uh, Ellsbury Grammar School. One of the few remaining grammar schools in the country, Buckinghamshire, is still holding out, still has selective education. But Lawrence I didn't meet him properly until about the second week of um, my first term. I think the first time, it, the first time we met was when I, we, we were both in the chapel choir, and I think I invited him in for coffee or tea after, after, after chapel choir once. And I think we talked for quite a long time about cricket and things. And we had cricket in common, we had music in common, so it's quite natural that we would to see quite a lot of each other. I mean, my background is very much, I suppose, divorced from the normal media image of, of, of where a Cambridge undergraduate comes from. And I come from a working class family. We live um, in a rented council, isn't it? Um, my mother and a couple of my, one of my brothers and sister work in a factory, this sort of thing. I went to a comprehensive school. So, I think the um, similarities we have, we often both see things in a similar sort of light and look on things in the same way and possibly a little quite cynical about a lot of things that go on. And uh, I think it's been quite important on some occasions when we've used it to kind of back each other's judgment up. It's good, I think it's good for, for, um, for someone like me who always like, who, who likes reassurance that he's right on what he's doing. But although they're so close, chance that brought them together for three years may soon set them apart. For unlike Lawrence, William is looking for a job, a safe job. I'm just uh, hunting around for various leaflets and things with information about me. Whether I was, but I come and see what sort of thing you had. Yeah, yeah. sure. <coughs> Right, well, what can I tell you? Well, um, I'm just looking basically for kind of general jobs at the moment. Well, I've done mathematics ever since I got here. Um, that's, so I've done it for all three years. And as for the jobs I'm applying for, they, none of them have any relevance to mathematics at all. They are mostly administrative general management posts in firms. Retailing is a kind of job which is very active, very physical. You know, if you're looking for a job which is office-based, which is involved with uh, sort of head office systems, this kind of thing. It's not that kind of job at all. It's not right. people on the job. Well, yes, I, I'm not really looking, I'm not really 
too keen on sitting in an office all day. You know, so it's, I'm quite interested. Cambridge students don't hunt for jobs in job centres, the jobs still hunt for them. At the annual careers fair in December, 150 firms set up their pitches and thousands come to browse. What's your discipline? I'm a mathematician. Well, we'd be very happy to recruit you either as a scientific well, uh, officer to be a mathematician. Even GCHQ are here, recruiting for the government spy communications centre at Cheltenham, as if all the misdemeanours of Anthony Blunt and the Apostles were forgiven and forgotten. Um, your prospects are brighter as a GCT. We'd um, uh, put you through uh, a lot of different jobs more rapidly so that you would get experience of many areas in GCHQ. For instance, I, my discipline is mathematics and statistics. I was taught Russian up to all level in, uh, in uh, July of this year. Have you got any application forms on you? Well, if you'd like to put your name and address on this form, we'll send you... William Fallon, with his solid middle-class background, is realist enough to know that music makes a good hobby, but a poor career. The application form would have to be in... I reckon I must have put in about 15 or so application forms. Either have put in, or I'm um, writing up at the moment. Some of the closing dates aren't until the middle of February. But I think, in, in all, there must be about 15 or 16 different places I've applied to, which I think is, having talked to various people, is above average. Someone told me the other day that he thought the average was about 10. But I've been try trying to cover, trying to make sure I, I have a job at the end of the day, certainly. William has said to me that he would like to do what I'm doing. He would like to sort of just stick out for what he really wants to do, which is to go into music in some form or other. Um, but feels that he has to apply for, as he said, boring jobs. Uh, because something might turn up and you need to boring job. Now, I suppose I, I, in some ways, have made a decision not to apply for boring jobs because I would be very bored and would leave it within two weeks. Um, so, I, I don't really, I don't, can't say I really feel envious of William, sort of, because he's got sort of second interviews lined up and will almost certainly get at least a couple of offers from those people. Um, but it, 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 is a, it is a bit strange uh, to see him sort of having been so close to him uh, within, this, within the three years, to see him veering off in a totally different direction, a direction that I would never, ever consider going into. With no great expectations, Lawrence seeks some professional advice. Would it be sensible if we started with that? You, you've asked about courses, not necessarily exam-orientated, in music administration uh, and grants for them. Would it be sensible if we... Yes, yes I, I, I wrote um, a letter about, about three weeks ago, I hadn't actually received a reply yet, to um, City University. Yeah. Um, they had this um, diploma course in the Arts Administration. administration um, right. But apart from that, I mean, there are some sort of six-month courses, aren't there, which the Arts yes. Council subsidise. I don't know who does them. I mean, that, that's something I haven't been able to find out, which colleges actually do those. Yes. Well. You're not worried about a qualification. <laughs> It'd be quite reassuring to know the sort of standard of degree they're expecting um, before yes. they're admitted to a course. Again, Probably a guilt complex talking into it. Yes. What do you think you're going to get? With a lot of hard work from here on in, I might just yes. go to one, I think. I think that's more likely to be a problem if you're talking about getting grants. But anything you can indicate which shows, first of all, that your interest and commitment are genuine, mm -hmm. and secondly, that you actually have some capacity, and you're not just saying, I'd like to do this yeah. and I think I could do it, but I'd like, I'd like to do this, I think I can do it, and look, yes. I have successfully yes. done it, uh, <coughs> is going to be really your main advantage. Yes. Just such an opportunity to show commitment and aptitude has arisen. Next term, the College Music Society will mount an ambitious centenary concert. The Society has chosen Elgar's dream of Gerontius. A rising British conductor and graduate of Queen's, Richard Hickox, has agreed to conduct. William Lawrence and Dr. Christopher Pounton come down to the Queen Elizabeth Hall, where Hickox is performing with the London Symphonia. What we've got to discuss, really, are the forces that we've got to use in this concert, um, exactly how we're you're constituting the chorus and orchestra and the rehearsal Thanks. plan um, and um, <coughs> also have we actually fixed on the music schools being the yes. venue? Um, we're hoping to know by the weekend about that. 
the music board, uh, music faculty board, are having a meeting on Thursday at which our application will be uh, discussed. The problem is that um, the music school is not available for bookings on Sundays. In the so this will, this will be a real exception. So it will be an exception. Quite, and the only possible justification mm. would be the special nature special of this concert. Yes. 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 How many are there in the course? This term, there are about 130. But this term's average is, uh, for previous years, has been about 120, 30. But I would have thought that with this being such a special thing, we will be talking in terms of 130, 40, 150. I, I think, yeah, 150 would be good, actually. Yes. Yeah, well, I think I'd like everyone to be at my rehearsal. Oh, yes. I think <laughs> yeah. I think we're, we're making a slight break with tradition, I think, in that we are being fairly strict about insisting on, on compulsory inverted commas, attendance yes. at the course yes. rehearsals, which we don't normally do, obviously. Yes, quite. But that's something that we do need to do. Well, I think now that we've established the forces in the rehearsals, <coughs> um, if we can just run it as professionally as we possibly can, yeah. mm -hmm. and really get people to yeah. turn up regularly and uh, really work hard, and if you can get the, the actual numbers organised by the end mm -hmm. of this term, then we can confer when I get back from the States in, in just in the week before, uh, before Christmas. So preparations begin. First, the auditions for the Chorus of Angels. If things go well and the performance of a difficult work is a resounding success, someone somewhere in the world of music might take kindly to Lawrence. On the shoulders of William Lawrence and their committee will fall not just the initial training of the choir, but orchestra, booking, seating, tickets, publicity, flowers, all this in the term before finals. Good range, very good. Mm, yeah. But, no, but she's got the right sort yeah. of tone. And the right sort of voice is what we're looking for. Yes. You know, for a chorus of angels. Especially if she wears that jersey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Okay. So, who's the next victim? short supply. I'm not, I'm not by nature a lazy person, but quite honestly, when I've actually sort of stopped doing Grontier's work, I've been so tired, or I've had one or two other things to do, say Joe's been down or something, or whatever, or, you know, just been on the phone to somebody else or something. I really haven't done any work. Uh, Is I've that been worrying? To very, yes, very worrying. It's worrying as well because, I mean, not just because I've got exams in sort of a term's time, but also because it's quite rude, I suppose, to people to, who are taking a certain amount of travel to actually prepare this stuff. Now, I've never actually missed supervision, so I've never arranged a supervision and not turned up for it. There was yet another distraction in Lawrence's life, Joanna, his fiancée, a Cambridge girl studying English at Leeds. Joanna and Lawrence spent most weekends together. I mean, I'm missing Joe a lot, obviously, when you've sort of spent, what, 18 months, nearly two years together. Uh, the person who's most most closely to sort of disappear. It's, it's quite worrying, and uh, that's quite upsetting. It doesn't really leave me in the best frame of mind to sort of tackle anything else, you know. Will I be here? Yes, because it's, it's, it's a Friday, is it? Is it Friday the 24th? Yeah, Friday 24th. Well, the 24th. Well, it's the week of Grantians. Have a look. What's well, the weekend of Grantians, anyway? Oh, we're going. It's rather nice, actually, isn't it? Yeah, it might be. That's all right. That's all right. Are you going? Will you? Yeah, I'm going. Yeah, you going? No, I haven't been invited. No, no, oh, it's one, really? one invitation that doesn't appear on my wall. I suppose I'd give me a 
fair bit of advice on girlfriends. He hasn't always taken it. Some of it hasn't actually been all that practical. <laughs> um, For example? Uh, <laughs> I did suggest to one to him that with one girl who was very obviously uh, infatuated with William. She was a member of the chorus last year. And there's an, quite a conductor-performer relationship, which often happens. Uh, it happens many times in school and things. And uh, I did suggest that she, he simply ought to go to bed with her and then say goodbye. He didn't, unfortunately. And so maybe he's still a bit desperate for it. I don't know. Lawrence and Joanna, his girl, his fiance. Uh, I can think of a couple of couple of instances where he's uh, told me that I'm on for it, or you know, in, in the, to use the kind of Queen's vernacular. And um, they've been wrong, <laughs> which has been most embarrassing. <laughs> Why don't you get a serenade, will you? Well, he might well do it at some point. She, she sings in Selwyn Choir. Yeah. And, um, so she might be there tonight? That's what I was saying to Lawrence earlier. Well, hey. Well, hey, indeed, yes. I really want to meet her. So if, if she is there, we have, we have to ascertain certain pieces of information, don't we? Yes, you do. You just like whether as she's as on for it or not. No, no, no. <laughs> no, you don't be that quite that nice, I don't know that you will be. No, you just... Um, oh, will you, man? The sound of subtlety. The sound of subtlety? Oh, the soul of that saying. Um, just say, William says, well, question mark. But if William was less successful in love, he had several flirtations in the world of industry and commerce. There was even one wild fling with Marks and Spencer. The nature of the work that they offer in their brochure seems very attractive. I think that's basically it. Also, it has good career progression, and it can lead to quite high things after a few years. I think that's uh, essentially um, what, what attracts me about Marks and Spencer. But I think uh, the, the first thing that attracted me was the name Marks and Spencer, which is... Uh, is, is a, has a, it has a very good name about the country. Is that what you're going to tell them? Uh, yes, I think so, and I shall d demonstrate that I'm wearing... <laughs> most of the things that I'm wearing are, in fact, theirs, <laughs> which might impress them. A cold January evening in Queen's College Chapel, and much to be done before Richard Hickox arrives to put the finishing touches to the performance. We're a little bit short, I think. We're still short of some tenors. If anybody knows anybody who isn't here tonight, please ask them to come along because two weeks on Sunday is the concert. At 8 o'clock, in two weeks on Sunday, there will be 250 people standing on West Road stage, or some will be sitting down. And if we don't know it, then it will show up. It will show up very, very badly. So we really must make sure we know this. Oh, oh, oh. Good start. And now on the, on the last thought, I haven't been given instructions for that, but I reckon... I, oh. I would imagine you hang it on for five. Oh, okay. Um, right. Now we're on the sales floor. The stores are split up into sections, as you've probably gathered, and this is lingerie. One, two, three. In play, both the high court and the glass of fire. On the ground. The power was blessed. The Lord's thy right. One, two, three. As he ought, ought, ought. Could sound quite OK. And then the next note's an octave down. Right. Um, this is the cold chain store, where foods with a short life are held. For instance, those Cornish pasties, they'll be sold by the 13th of February. I mean, one presupposes that certainly uh, an ability uh, either to, to, to sing or play a musical instrument is, uh, well, helpful to be involved in the music mm. society. But in order to become vice president, you need something else other than just that ability, don't you? Oh, yes, I think so, because you've got to, you've got to be able to um, run a committee and get them to do things and so on and delegate responsibility and just kind of administrate things generally. William goes for his interview with Marks and Spencer, tactfully attired from head to toe in St. Michael's products. Was Marks and Spencer on your sort of tick list? I think so, yes, because um, Marks and Spencer has such a good reputation and it's, and it's always thought of as a good firm both to buy from and to work for. It has an attractive aura around it. Marks and Spencer saw William again, but they did not offer him a job. It's quite strange actually walking into breakfast and seeing all these people with suits on, thinking, hmm, strange, why not one, 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 I got one on. The nature of the sort of job I'm applying for, or the sort of thing I'm hoping to go into, has meant that I haven't sort of had interviews 
and I sort of had one or two chats with people, but I hadn't had interviews. So I've got no sort of second interviews to, to, to think about, and no sort of definite officer jobs at all. So that's, uh, that's too many bit worrying. Well, I mean, I suppose I could always sort of take my vacation job uh, through summer until whatever happens, whatever Doing comes what? up, selling cigarettes. I mean, if I started in sort of July or something, and they dragged it through it to the end of the year, I would start to get pretty depressed by then, I'd have thought. I would like to have something else. Job front. What's Ian Wright, Lawrence's tutor. Um, I've got nothing pending from any actual prospective employers. I'm still waiting for City University to get back. Um, oh, for the court. That's for the diploma thing. Um, I checked today. I got the, I got the acknowledgement of my application form on the 7th of February. So uh, they're taking quite a while. I mean, I've also written to the Arts Council um, because they, I mean, obviously this course is sponsored by them and they do hold a certain number of bursaries which they give out to various yeah. people who get through. I mean, most people, if they get a place, they only take 18 people a year yeah, on this course. Yeah. Um, if you get a place, then they will normally um, give you a bursary towards that. Yeah. Um, they're proven to be pretty inefficient as well, in that it's over two weeks since I wrote to them. And the Arts Council is uh, in a state of shame. What, what they need is a good administrator. <laughs> What I need is more money. Yeah. Okay, well, we had this conversation before, but I mean, clearly you've got to keep your nose right down mm -hmm. against the grandstand. Yeah, there, I mean, there's one important thing in that next term is, in terms of music, is free. Yeah, um, well, better it's, stay that way. Yeah. I can't imagine myself failing. Um, I can see myself getting a third, which would be pretty disastrous. Well, um, I mean, in the context of having spent three years here, supposedly doing some work, it would be, be pretty disastrous. I don't know that sort of career-wise, um, and I suppose personal dignity-wise, it would it would smack a little bit. Do you lie awake worrying about? Um, I don't know if I lie awake worrying about that. I lie awake worrying about a lot of other things, and not necessarily worrying about other things, but just thinking. I'm starting thinking too much at the moment. But within days of the concert, Lawrence and the committee had even more to think about. I'm sorry to uh, call you all together at such short notice. Uh, it's very much an extraordinary meeting, so we're not going to have a minute read or anything like that. Um, basically, uh, this afternoon, Dr. Panton received a phone call from Richard Hickox uh, telling him that he was uh, not well. His doctor has told him that he uh, must rest for the next three months. Um, it's something to do with him having a spastic colon or something like that. I don't understand the medical procedure, obviously. Um, basically, the gist of it is that the, he will not be able to come and conduct Corontius. Um, he's cancelling an awful lot, actually. All his commitments for at least the next two weeks are cancelled. He has put forward the suggestion that we carry on with Corontius on the same date um, using Stephen Armstrong as conductor. Uh, Stephen conducted uh, um, Grantius about two years ago at the Ely Festival. Uh, Hickox was there and thought it was a very good performance and thought that Stephen was a very competent conductor and understood the work well. Mm -hmm. That's one possibility. Uh, there are, as I see, well, sort of two other possibilities. The obvious one is to cancel Grantius. I personally am of the opinion that if we went ahead with a different conductor, then various things would uh, mount up and make it be a complete and utter yeah. fiasco. Mm -hmm. What we've spent five hundred pounds, we've actually spent ah, it right. already. Well, on the on the effect. Effect. Yes, we're not so on music and tickets, yeah. and that's we're very lucky to manage to stop it tomorrow morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we ask Armstrong to conduct for a start? I mean, do we do we need someone? Well, Armstrong to conduct. But obviously, we should try and get someone who is vaguely made. <laughs> okay. Well, look, the way we'll leave it um, is that I will contact Armstrong tonight. Uh, I will try and let you know tonight what he says. But uh, I, mean, it, I think it is imperative that we don't let this out just for the next okay. 24 hours or so. Watching and one hoo. Stephen Armstrong is approached and agrees to conduct. In this crisis, Armstrong has been down to take one rehearsal. It's William's job now as chorus master to put over to the choir in their final rehearsals the new interpretation. Right, okay. Now we're going to do that passage. 
again, and could you please do, uh, do it, now do it, if, you, if people here last week, do it the Stephen Armstrong way, in a silly accent, remember? To every slave and pious cheat and calling a right? I want you to sound demonic, please. I'd like to point out, I'd like to point out that devils don't sound like little Lord Fauntleroy, and I'd like to... So could you not sing it like little Lord Fauntleroy? And... I like, and I'd like you to sing it in a kind of wicked, nasty accent, and he's put here in, in inverted commas, Cockney. <laughs> right? To every slave, a slight slive rather than slave. <laughs> slive, slive, and part, and not too much of a t on cheat. Cheat. Make, make it more of a D, cheat. Okay. Got that? Right. Especially in that passage, starting with the basses and casting groaners to every slave. Right. By courtesy of Radio Cambridge, Lawrence seeks to ensure that the concert is a sellout. But why this piece of music? Um, it marks quite a departure from the normal Magsock repertoire, in that uh, we normally attempt something some, somewhat smaller than this. But we decided that with it being once in a hundred years, we had to do something particularly big. And also, there's quite a nice tie-in in that um, this is actually the 50th anniversary of Elgar's death. Lawrence, you've answered all the questions I was going to ask, uh, but one final one. What do you like particularly about the dream of Grantius? Uh, it's a difficult question to answer in a short space of time. I think, for, for me, that the actual appeal is the size of it and contains just the most imaginative and dreamlike music. He's stuck entirely to his program, and it contains some marvelous, memorable tunes. You've sold it to me. <laughs> How do I come to see it? If you want to come, um, the performance starts at 8 o'clock on Sunday, Sunday the 26th. Tickets are selling very well at the moment. I would suggest that if somebody wants to come, they really ought to try and get a ticket. You can, uh, get but even if all 500 tickets are sold, the society will still lose several hundred pounds. I haven't got much time because we've got to go on about four minutes. So I'd just like to say, chorus, the very important thing is to do is to watch Stephen Armstrong all the time like a hawk. I think it's going to be very good as on the proviso that you do watch all the time, OK? So good luck. And to quote some famous advice, don't be nervous, but just remember it all depends on you. Now, <laughs> so the concert that nearly didn't happen did. And with choir and orchestra augmented by local people and students from other colleges, Elgar's mystical masterpiece unwinds through the venom of the devil's chorus to its serene end.
it was good. I, I'm a teeny bit disappointed. Well, no, disappointed is the wrong word. I'm just shattered. <laughs> um, there were bits where the orchestra could have been a little better. The chorus was fantastic. The devil's chorus was amazing. I couldn't believe that devil's chorus. It was just staggering. Uh, I don't know. Has it been a lot of work? A hell of a lot of work. Too much work. Too much work and not enough academic work. But um, rectify that now, I suppose. Does it matter? It doesn't matter. The fact that I haven't done any kind of work. It does a bit, but this has been quite an experience. Uh, and I suppose in future life it'll be something that I can look back on and it's given me quite a bit. What are you going to do now? Go to a party. <laughs> FF staircase, armored room. There should be lots of booze. And I think we're just going to have a good time, I think. And then? Next, tomorrow? Oh, tomorrow. Well, tomorrow, um, I've got to get down some work. And on Tuesday, I've got an interview, a second interview, in Bracknell. So I've, you know, there's, there's, a, okay, there's, there's no time to sit back and you know, rest on one's laurels or anything. So just got to keep going. As finals approach, William's future is mapped. His 15 applications have resulted in three job offers. The job I've got um, is the job with the United Kingdom Atomic Energy Authority. I should be working for them as administrator. And to start with, I guess for approximately two years, I'll be working down near Dorchester at Winfrith, which is, they've got an establishment down there. Um, I think it's, of all the jobs I went to, fit, to interview for, I think it was the job I preferred. And so, that, so I'm very pleased to have got it. And I think I'm probably very lucky to have, uh, to have got it as well. I've got my job selling cigarettes, which I'm quite prepared to take up again for the summer. Um, or indeed, I suppose, for as long as is necessary. Um, I, I, I feel that I'm, I, I'm resilient enough to actually take that job on for a longish time um, until something crops up. I'm pretty confident that something will crop up. And if I wasn't, then I'd be absolutely desperate at the moment. Um, but I do believe, I mean, there are an awful lot of orchestras and opera companies and concert agencies and whatever around, and I'm sure eventually one of, one of them must have a vacancy somewhere, and I'm pretty well known to most of them by now, so I'm sure that there must be a vacancy soon. I'm, I'm not terribly nervous about the possibility of taking exam. I don't think I've ever been really nervous about it, and especially now, there's nothing, there's not really not much resting on them for me. I, I've got to get a second to be sure of getting my job. Um, it would be, obviously, it doesn't mean I'm not going to sit back and not do any work, because I think I will get a second. If everything goes according to plan, I should pass. And but that's worse. really what I'm looking to. I could get a third. And I could get a third. So it does make it worse when you see all these people who are sort of having their futures lined up. So, you know, a couple of years, at least, are sort of well mapped out. And here's me sitting here, still writing my letters to get more music agencies and things, saying, dear, so give me a job. So I think I, was, I, I made the right decision to make a broad range of applications, and as I say, I think I've got a pretty good job as a result. Well, with William, I mean, I think I... I don't know, William and I have a very odd relationship. Um, I think we've been thrown together through an awful lot of common interests. Whether that means we're great friends, I don't know. We do argue, well, not argue a lot, but there's... I feel there's a lot of tension between us at times. Um, there's quite a... So usually it's just a sort of competitive spirit, I suppose. Is that now exacerbated by him having a job and you're not? Oh, no, no, I wouldn't, no. Certainly not on my, on my part. I don't know whether William um, would say the same thing. But, I mean, that's what he wants to do, is he? Well, he can go ahead and do it. I certainly wouldn't, wouldn't uh, contemplate doing that sort of job myself. So, um, and if the, I don't know whether it's the sort of thing he really wants to do. The dream of Garontius has cut little eyes outside Cambridge, and the dream of Lawrence that he might get into music is fading despite 150 applications. But now there's a truce to letter writing. Finals have arrived. Go on this afternoon, tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. What's that? What did you go to talk to um, Political culture of the USA since 1900. Well, that's a dog, isn't that? No. <laughs> <laughs> not, not when you've done the work I've done for it, no. Well, I, I mean, if the, if the three questions I want come up, it'll be OK. If they don't, I'm going out at half past, half past two. It's the first exam for ages, but I haven't had an irritating piece of music running through my head all the way through. No, I, I didn't have one. I feel always right. Last year, I, was, I, was, I woke up with a Prokofiev sonata going in my head. Dang, dang, dang. You really are. Well, the exams are very much upon me, and I think the major feeling I'm feeling now is that I haven't done enough work for them.
it's something I've always felt for all exams. I've always been the same. I've never really done enough work. In fact, I mean, even when I was applying here, I didn't do enough work for A-levels and managed to actually get through on them, and I didn't really do enough work for the entrance exam here. But because the papers were of a sort of fairly vague nature, I managed to sort of con them that I was reasonably intelligent enough to get through. I'm going to be very nervous when I go in. I always do the same thing whenever I look through a paper. Um, I never see a question I can answer. I go through all 17 and think, oh, God, let's go now. You know, there's no point in staying in here. I might as well go now and go and watch the cricket or something. better than I could ever hope for, really. There were three questions on the paper I could answer, and I had to answer three. So, I mean, it was exactly right. There were the three questions I'd be buying. But I think my prediction of getting a two, two or a third has probably proved a little wrong. They, they, they've, just gone, they've just gone very well. But, yeah, I don't know, in some ways, it's, it's a little anticlimactical. It's just a little bit of an anticlimax in that, I, in some ways, actually, I think this is going to be my main feeling soon. I'm going to feel very cheated by the whole thing because I haven't done enough work and I don't know whether being at Cambridge, being a member of this university is um, consistent with doing practically no work but just being able to revise three topics for each paper at the last minute, being able to assimilate a number of facts that you read in an article or a chapter or one chapter in a book and being able to reproduce those facts, that might be it might have got me a decent result, but I don't know whether it's really what I've been here for for these last three years. Lawrence lived dangerously. He got a poor second and on leaving Cambridge sat in his booth at Woolworths for five months selling cigarettes. Joanna is no longer his fiancée. Today he lives in a bedsit in North London. He's an artist's agent and administrator for a small concert agency. William played it safe. He got a good degree and a steady job. He lives in Dorset and has become a member of Bournemouth Symphony at a choir and organist and choir master of St. Peter's Dorchester.